the bell icon to turn on notifications. Before the advent of things like the cloud, the only way to really share a workbook with your colleagues or other people was to attach it to an email and send it through. Now, the problem with that was always that you ended up with multiple copies of your Excel workbook, all of them different. If I attach this workbook to an email and sent it to Adam, when he opens the attachment, he's essentially working on a copy. So any of the changes that he makes are not going to automatically update in my copy. He would have to reattach the workbook with his changes and send it back to me. And this process was very laborious and long winded and was really open to mistakes. Fortunately, in the last few years, we've been able to utilize things like the cloud and sharing has really been integrated into the Microsoft applications. So if I want to share this workbook with Adam, I have a couple of different ways that I can do this as always. The first thing you'll notice is that all the way over on the right hand side, I have a share button. So I can choose to share this document and see who it's shared with. So if I click on share, it's going to open up the share pane on the right hand side. And this is where I can essentially invite people to this workbook. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to type in Adam's email address. So we're going to do Adam dot. Now it might be when you type in an email address, it pops up in a list below. And that in general happens if you are all working in the same organization and all connected to the same network servers. Now, Adam and I aren't on a network together. We don't work for the same company. So that's why I'm getting no suggestions, but that's fine. I can still have his email address in there and then I can choose his level of access to this particular workbook. So if I want him to be able to make changes, I can choose can edit. If I only want him to be able to view or effectively just read this workbook, I can change his access to can view. Now I'm going to say that he can edit and I'm going to include a quick message. And the final thing that I can change in here is if I want to automatically share changes. So I'm going to say yes, always share changes that either myself or Adam make to this workbook. When I click on share, Adam is going to receive an email and in that email, he's going to have a link which will link him directly to this workbook. Now, of course, remember in this scenario, if you have any protection applied, they're going to be asked to enter in the password. So just bear that in mind when you're sharing. As soon as I share with him, notice that I can now see all the people that I've shared this workbook with. So I can see myself and I can also see Adam. Another thing I can do in here is I can choose to get a sharing link. So if I click get sharing link, I can choose to create my own edit link or my own view only link. So this is an alternative way of basically doing the same thing. I can choose to create an edit link and then I can copy that link and maybe paste that into an email or maybe paste it into something like Teams or some other messaging application. So you can effectively send an email with the link in it to whoever you specified in this invite people area, or you can grab an edit link and send it out. Now, in general, I find using the link option works better if you want to send this workbook out to lots of different people, because instead of typing 50 people's email addresses into this invite people area, I can simply grab the link, maybe open up Outlook and use a distribution list that I've already got set up. So bear that in mind, if it's just for a few people, then this is absolutely fine. Now, if I then decide that I no longer want Adam to have access to this particular workbook, I can remove his access at any time. So if I hover over his name, right click my mouse, I can change his permissions so that he can only view as opposed to edit, or I can remove him entirely which means now that if he was to click on the link in the email that he's received, the link is effectively going to be broken and he won't be able to get to this document. So really easy to manage access. So you have your share button in the top corner. If you prefer, you can go to file and you have a share option in here as well. And this works in basically the same way. I can choose to share with people and it opens up that same pane. Alternatively, I could go to file, share, email 
and then I have a few different options. So if I still want to send this as a copy, as an attachment, I can choose to create an attachment. Now, if I click send as attachment, it's going to open Outlook with that attachment. I can choose to send a link so that everybody is working on the same copy of this workbook. I can send it as a PDF attachment. And again, this is all attachments because we're in the email section. I can choose to send it as an XPS. Now an XPS is basically Microsoft's version of a PDF file, or I can send as an internet fax. So you have a few additional options if you use share from the file menu, as opposed to clicking the share button in the top corner. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.